Microsoft have released their own Microsoft 365 backup. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a full demo. Plus, we're gonna talk about why some IT people think that the very thought of using Microsoft for a 365 backup is crazy. And I'm gonna give you my opinion on the pricing. So without further ado, let's go. But before we start, just a quick intro. My name is Jonathan Edwards from Integral IT in the UK. We help businesses all over the world with their Microsoft 365. You can find us integral-it.co.uk. Now I hope if you're watching this video, you already understand the importance of backing up your Microsoft 365 data. That is your mailboxes, your OneDrive, your SharePoint, and your Teams. Now Microsoft 365 is a cloud product. And whilst Microsoft do look after your data and the infrastructure, their service doesn't cover everything. Now, a good analogy here is if you rent an apartment in an apartment block. That apartment block is Microsoft. Your individual apartment is your individual Microsoft 365 tenant. And your possessions inside the apartment is your data. Now, if one day your kettle broke or you got a hole in your sofa, your landlord isn't going to fix it for you. It's the same with Microsoft 365. Your data, your responsibility. Now, when it comes to Microsoft 365 backup, up until now, we've had to rely on third-party companies. Companies like Acronis, Redstar, and Veeam, to name but a few. Now, as with all things Microsoft, they identify gaps in their products and they create new products to fill those gaps. And that's what they've done with Microsoft 365 Backup. As of today, as I film this video in February 2024, Microsoft 365 Backup is available in preview. Now, here's the first thing I want to talk about. Lots of IT professionals and lots of IT service companies think that the very idea of using Microsoft to back up Microsoft 365 data is crazy. Now, without being controversial, I slightly disagree. Firstly, in the old days when we all used to have servers in the office, we sometimes used to plug external hard drives in the back of the server to act as a backup. Now, I think a lot of IT professionals still have this mentality, but I don't think for one minute that Microsoft are plugging external hard drives into the back of your 365. No, their backup product spreads your backup across different data centers and different locations. I think that's pretty robust. And the second reason why I disagree with it is because lots of IT service companies make good money from selling third-party Microsoft 365 backup products like Acronis and Redstar. Using Microsoft 365 backup, they're not gonna make the same money because the Microsoft 365 backup charging is more transparent. Now that is a good segue to talk about my next topic, which is pricing. And I am gonna contradict myself just a little bit here. The current Microsoft 365 backup costs 15 cents per gigabyte per month. Let's look at an example company. There's a company with 50 employees. Each employee has a mailbox with 10 gig of data. Now, this is just an example. Plus, each employee has 10 gigabyte of OneDrive storage. Plus, the company as a whole has 500 gigabytes of SharePoint shared folders. So my rough calculations make that 1.5 terabytes of data. So 1.5 terabytes of data times 15 cents per gig is $225 per month. Now, if we compare that to the product that my IT company currently use, which is a Cronus, that costs two and a half dollars per user per month. And with that, you get unlimited storage. So it's a per user model rather than a storage model. With that same 50 user company, forget about all the data they've got, it's simply 50 times two and a half dollars per month, which equals $125 per month. Now that is nearly half the price of the Microsoft 365 option. Plus, I didn't give users that much data in my example. So the Microsoft 365 option 
could be a lot more. So, in a roundabout way, what I'm trying to say is that the current model from Microsoft for their backup is very, very expensive. Now, I hope when the product gets into general availability, they will sort that out and they will offer a per user model like a Cronus do to bring those costs down. Now, I'm sure you agree, I've talked enough. So what I'm gonna do now is jump on and show you the demo. Okay, to access the Microsoft 365 backup, you've got to log into the admin portal. So I'm logged into the web portal now of office.com and you can see that I've got access to the admin. So I click on there. Now I'm gonna click on show all. Now, if I go down to settings, Microsoft 365 backup, this is where the Microsoft 365 backup lives. Now you can see here, we've got a bit of a red banner saying to start using this service, please enable it. So to do that, I can click on here or I can just go down to set up here. Now we want to scroll down to the headings that is files and content, which is here. And it's used content AI with Microsoft syntax. So we go into there. Now you can see I've got a tab here saying set up billing and manage Microsoft syntax. Now that is grayed out and that is because I need to set up billing. So if I click on here, it tells you exactly what I need, okay? So the prereqs are an Azure subscription because this is a pay-as-you-go model at the moment, payable to Microsoft. And we also need a resource group. Now I've got an Azure subscription. You can see there's a drop down here. What I haven't done at the moment is create a resource group. So to do that, I'll just take you through it, but it's very easy. I go to portal.azure.com and resource groups is here. If it's not there, I can simply just search for it at the top and it'll say resource groups. So I'll go into there. I'll click on create here and it's gonna ask me to tie this resource group to a subscription. I've only got one subscription, it's there. I'll call this M365 Backup. I'll put this in a region, so I will choose uh, UK. Click on Next. I don't need any tags, so click on Review and Create. Validation passed, and click on Create. Okay, I now have a resource group. So if I just come out of here and go back to the admin page here, I'll click away from there. I'll just refresh this. I'll click on Setup Billing again. I will scroll down here now and click on here. It's going to ask me to select my resource group that I've just created, my region, so UK South, and then it's going to ask us to accept the terms. Click on save and that'll set up billing. Okay, that can take a few moments and it says now that the billing has been set up successfully. So back on this page here, you can now see that this is no longer grayed out. So if I go to manage Microsoft 365 syntax, we've got lots of different features down here. You can see backup is here, and again, it says it's in preview. So I just click on there, and here we are. The status is turned off, but I can simply turn it on, and I can click on save, and there we go. That is now turned on, so I can either click on here to go back to Microsoft 365 Backup, or I can simply go to Settings and Microsoft 365 Backup, and you can see that that banner now has gone away. So what I can do firstly, let's have a look at SharePoint. We can click on Set Up a Policy. It's gonna tell us the backup frequency here, the backup retention, and it's a pay-as-you-go model at 15 cents per gig per month. So I can click on next. What we can do here is we can choose the sites we want to protect. We've got certain rules that we can look at. We can upload CSVs. This is a test tenancy. I don't really have a lot, but what we can do here, look, and we can click on all the sites that we have. This has got nothing in it, but we'll add that anyway. Click on next. You can see it's going to back up every 15 minutes, which is ideal. Click on Create Policy. Click on Done. So that's SharePoint done. Okay. I'll set up Policy for Exchange. Again, we've got the, the overview there of the policy. It's back up every 10 minutes. We're keeping things for a year. Click on Next. Now, what we have here is Choose User Mailboxes. Now, this might be a bit of a process in your business. If you've got a business with lots of different mailboxes and you add another user, you might have to come back in here to add the user to backup, okay? Or what you could do is you could backup via security group. So you could put all the users into a specific security group and it would automatically back them up that way. So you've got a few more options there. Again, I've just selected this one user in this tenancy. Click on next. It's telling us it's confirming and we'll create that policy. Okay, that's, that's created. Okay, processing. And finally, we've got OneDrive, okay? 
Again, backup frequency every 15 minutes. Click on next. We can choose the accounts. Again, we've got some different options there. So I'll choose my account there. Click on add. Click on next. Click on create policy. Okay. Click on done. Now we can click on maybe view details. That'll tell us the details. It's still processing. Now, something to mention here, you can see that Teams isn't here at the moment. I think that's because this product is still in preview. I think that will come in a few months. So that's the backup sorted. And then you'll be able to see, I've probably not got any uh, anything to restore at the moment, but you go into restoration tasks. If you wanted to restore something and you will go simply on new task, what do we want to restore? So if it's a mailbox, we'll go like that. Add user mailboxes. Jonathan Edwards, click on add, click on next. And then we can restore everything up to a certain date. So that's kind of some ransomware protection. Or we've got selected content only. So we've got the, maybe the past 48 hours. We can add some filter. So restore all emails from Simon. We could put something like that. But if I just selected that, click on, I don't think we've got a backup actually at the moment. So I don't think it's going to let me go past that. But it's going to let me restore that. So that is the Microsoft 365 backup. What you will see and what I've noticed straight away is that I like the fact that my backup is all in my portal. I'm not having to go to a, a different a different third party company to restore my 365 data. I like that convenience. So that in a nutshell is Microsoft 365 backup. So I hope this video has been informative. For me, Microsoft 365 Backup is still a bun in the oven, but I think it's going to be a product of the future. Look forward to seeing you again soon.